Welcome biologists to spec point C of transporting plants, looking at transpiration and practicals around this. So first of all, we need to know some definitions. Anything in a red box is taken directly from the Mars scheme. We need to know that transpiration is the evaporation of water from the leaves or through the stomata. But we also need to know that the transpiration stream is the movement of water up the xylem from the roots to the leaves. They're different things. Make sure you know the difference. Now we need to know here that water is brought to the leaves in the xylem in this vascular bundle here. It evaporates from the xylem into the spongy mesophyll and it leaves the plant through the stomata or stoma for singular stomata is plural. And the stomata has guard cells on either side of it. Um, now we need to know factors that can impact upon transpiration, which don't forget is the evaporation of water from a leaf. First one is temperature. The higher the temperature, the higher the kinetic energy and therefore more water will leave the plant through evaporation through the stomata. Humidity is the next one. So the higher the humidity, it means the higher the concentration of water vapour outside of the stomata. Now, if I have an increased concentration of water vapour surrounding my stomata here, it means that the diffusion gradient here between the water inside and outside is going to be very, very low. So therefore, less water will leave through evaporation. Light, the more light I have, the more high the light intensity. It's really important you work, use the word intensity there. The higher the light intensity, the higher the rate of photosynthesis. If I have more photosynthesis taking place, it means that I need more carbon dioxide for this process and I also need to release the oxygen, which is a byproduct of photosynthesis. And these gases are exchanged through the stomata, so it means it's going to be open more. If the stomata is going to be open more to exchange these gases, it means I'm going to lose more water vapour through evaporation. Air movement is similar again to humidity. If I have a higher wind movement or higher air movement, it means that the water vapour surrounding my stomata will be blown away. It won't be there anymore. So therefore, this will um, cause a steeper water vapour gradient and more water will leave the stomata through evaporation. The number, size and position, obviously the more stomata I have, the more water will leave through evaporation. The bigger the stomata, the more water will leave through evaporation. And also the position. So some plants do have stomata on the top and on the bottom of their leaves. Those that do have more stomata on the top of the leaves are more likely to, to lose more water through evaporation. Because if the stomata were underneath the leaves, it just means that I can get a bit more of a buildup of that water vapour and therefore not lose as much water um, from the stomata, kind of linking into the humidity um, Bit that I've just talked about. Next one is the presence of a waxy cuticle. The thicker the waxy cuticle, the less water will leave through evaporation, which um, is because the, water, the waxy cuticle is waterproof barrier. Next one is water availability, and this links into spec point E in terms of hydrophytes, which is this one, and xerophytes. So the more water availability uh, water is available, such as in the water lily here, it doesn't really matter how much water the water lily loses through evaporation because it's readily available. But in the cactus, uh, because there isn't as much water available, it will try to hold on to that as much as possible using different um, ways, which we'll look about in spec point E. So those are the different ways in which transpiration can be impacted. Let's look at some practicals. So for a practical, you need to know about the potometer, and this is what one looks like. You also need to know how to set this up. So these points here at the bottom are from the mark scheme. So when I'm setting up a potometer, I need to select a healthy plant here that I'm using. I need to make sure that I cut the stem underwater to avoid any air bubbles getting into my xylem. I need to cut the stem at an angle to increase the surface area for the xylem to take up the water. I need to make sure I'm drying my leaves and that links into the humidity part to avoid um, a reduction in the transpiration due to water, not wanting to leave as much if the, if the leaves are wet. I've got to use the same age and species of plant and I've got to make sure I've got the same surface area of the leaves or the same number of leaves. I also need to make sure I set up the potometer underneath the water and introduce an air bubble once it's all set up. These um, control variables here are very, very popular, as well as the ones that control and can impact upon transpiration. A couple of popular questions here with potometer. The reason why a potometer doesn't accurately take up, measure the water uptake is because some of the water can be used in turgor pressure and also some water can be used in photosynthesis. What information do I need to calculate the water uptake? You need to know the diameter or radius, the length of bubbles time, length of bubbles moved, and the time. Good luck with your exams, guys.